Uh. Yeah. When they hear the sound of the drum, they'll be saying, oh Lord, here they come. Yeah, here we come. Huh, here we come. <laughs> here we come. Here we come. When you hear the sound of the drum, we'll be saying, here we come. Yeah, here we come. Hey, here we come. Uh, here we come. Here we come. Yeah, here we come. Hey, here we come. Hey, here we come. Here we come. All right, welcome guys. It's Rick Nockfee here, and today's the day, Studio One version four. So uh, I just want you to know how hard it's been for me to keep this day a secret because of course I've been knowing about it for a long time and this is something that our team in Hamburg and also in Baton Rouge have been uh, waiting for for a long time. So it's finally here. And uh, today you're gonna hear from tons of our artists, um, producers, engineers from all over the world who have been using Studio One version 4, helping us with the beta test um, over the past couple of months. And um, you know, you're also gonna have a chance at the end of the webcast, uh, if you're a member of our YouTube channel, we're gonna be posting tons of new videos. So what you're gonna see today is just a very small portion of what Studio One version 4 really is about. So first of all, we're gonna go to the UK. So James Reynolds is an uh, artist, producer, engineer in the UK, and he's going to tell you about some of the new features. Check it out. My name is James Reynolds. People in the industry might know me as James F. Reynolds because I needed to put the F there because there was another James Reynolds prior to myself. Last week I was working on some K-pop stuff, a band called BTS. The week before that was Paloma Faith. More recently, Gorgon City, um, an Indian act. And yeah, so, so different music, which I love. You know, I love the diversity of it. I love the challenge of mixing different types of records. Pattern Mode in Studio One 4 is a really handy new feature. It's a very quick way of putting drums together uh, and allows you to create patterns and then then make copies of those patterns, edit them slightly, and then just drop the different patterns in. So if you're in a, in a songwriting situation, it's, it's just very quick. To have it built into the, the, the sequencer is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's like having a 909 on the timeline. It's just fantastic. And you know, whether you're making trap beats or house records, they, we all still use the 909 a lot and so getting a beat together is very quick. Impact's had a big overhaul. It's become even more user-friendly. The interface is fantastic, uh, very clear and easy to use. And I'll now actually be starting to build my sound libraries with Impact XL because it's so quick. It has um, a drag and drop feature so you can take a folder full of snares, for example, your favorite snares, and if you hold shift and drag them on, it will just put them across all of the different pads ready to ready to use, which you can then sync up if you've got a drum pad or, or whatever. It also has a very clever um, slice uh, feature, which if you have a loop that you like, but you want to sort of dig into that loop and use different parts of it on your pad, you can take that loop, hold shift, it will splice up that loop. So you've got all the different sections to then very quickly dig in and use various beats that you want out of that loop individually. Another feature that was uh, requested by quite a few Studio One uh, users was to have AF import. Uh, it allows you to drag and drop a saved session from a Pro Tools user straight into Studio One. So if they've 
left the stems within the Pro Tool session and that they haven't been chopped off from bar zero, it means you can just drag the AF file in and you, you're ready to go. You know where all the files are. And actually this, this works across the board. So you can, you can do the same with Logic and Cubase. So it makes it a very handy feature to have, especially as a mixer when you're requesting, you know, you get sent stems and they've left them all in, the, in, in a Pro Tools session. And also for people that are moving from Pro Tools to Studio One, uh, it allows them to dip into their old back catalog very quickly. Of course, if I'm working with someone who's not in Studio One, but in, in Pro Tools, I can then save the session as an AF and send it to them and then they, they're ready to go on their side as well. So it's a, it's a two way street. Their whole goal is to make everything as intuitive as possible, as quick as possible. Uh, when I was preparing the session yesterday with my assistant um, for the, the demonstration, I created a song in half an hour. It, it's so quick. My reason for moving to Studio One was how everything is organized, being able to split channels within the channel. So it's all very tidy, very, very easy to consume and, and, and makes your life or my life as a mixer much easier and, and therefore more enjoyable. All right, guys, we're back, and this is Richard Gaspar, our new product specialist. So um, one of the features that we've had a lot of requests from users over the years, especially guys that are coming from other DAWs or working with other people in other DAWs, is AAF um, capability. So kind of tell us a little bit about what, what does that mean? What, what is AAF, and how, how do we implement it in Studio One version 4? So AAF is kind of an open format uh, export and, and import uh, file type where you can ship files from a DAW or a video editor uh, into, uh, an, uh, an, into another DAW and back and forth so that if you've made cuts, uh, if you have uh, arranged your files in such a way where everything doesn't just start at zero and you have all of this data, you can actually ship that between your DAWs and not lose your place of, of where you are um, in your session. Yeah, that, that actually is pretty cool because, you know, for many years, I mean, I have friends that work in other DAWs and, you know, I've always had to tell them uh, when they wanted me to mix something, oh, well, you know, go ahead and give me straight wave files from the first bar, yeah. but now, well, if you're using Logic or Pro Tools or uh, any other DAW that supports AAF, all you have to do is export out an AAF version of the song. Right. And so, uh, so now you've you've actually gotten something from Pro Tools that you're going to import um, into Studio One, right? Yeah. So here we are on the main start page. So the way we do that is we go to File, Open, and I have an an AAF file here that I grabbed for this from another DAW and there it is you double click it and it opens up in Studio One and you can see wow. there are all the files all chunked up yeah so there's cuts and you know and if there was any kind of edits there's they're basically still there right 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 that's awesome and so for you guys who do audio for video which is the main uh, the main thing that I do as as a, a freelancer uh, we didn't leave those guys out as well. This is um, something that I pulled from Premiere. And so the same thing. This is uh, some loops that were cut here. And you can see there we have everything that was pulled from a Premiere session. So another feature that a lot of users have asked for, and this is one of the top rated uh, feature requests on answers.personas.com, has been what Pro Tools calls import session data. So now we have import song data in Studio One. So uh, show us how that works. All right, so when you're in uh, just a song and you want to pull that data over, we just go right here to our song menu song import song data I've you're going got, to pick the song that you want to get the data from right correct you double click the actual dot song file the studio one dot song file and it opens up this window where you, i can choose all of the tracks to import the events the layers the automation Co i can copy the files into this actual song folder so that everything is together and then we also have some um, just some console options volume pan inserts and sends so anything that was a part of that other session we can bring into this session that's awesome 
Okay, so next we're gonna hear from um, an amazing teacher and uh, probably one of the most knowledgeable Studio One guys that I know, Marcus Huskins. Let's check it out. What's up guys? My name is Marcus Huskins and thank you for joining me. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of the new features added in Studio One version four, and that is the chord track. All right, so let's take a look at the chord track. Now, first off, in order to view the chord track, you just have to click this little icon in the top here. And as you'll see over here, we now have this global track up top, which is essentially a harmonic roadmap of your entire song at any given point in duration. Just before we get too involved in things over here, I want to take a moment to kind of break this down and help everyone understand this a little bit better. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to take a look at the tempo track. Now you might be asking, why are we taking a look at the tempo track? Well, essentially because the theory or the philosophy of the way that the chord track works is actually quite similar to the tempo track, being that one, it's a global track, and two, it has the ability to affect all of the tracks in your song simultaneously depending on how things are set up. So for example, if we take a look at this song over here, which has a BPM of 68, and we take a look at each one of these tracks, you'll notice that A, the track is set to a time stretch mode, and B, the audio events themselves have a file tempo that's embedded into them. Now what this means is that any adjustments I make to my tempo track, in this case being at 68 BPM, because all of these audio events have the file tempo information, they are essentially going to follow. So I could, for example, take this, change my BPM to 77. We see this little icon that's indicating that there's some type of processing happening here. And of course, as expected, they will follow. 16 years later. And of course I can bring this back to 68 and we're back to where we started. 16 years later. So if we take this same philosophy and apply it to the chord track, then we can really understand what's happening. So let's go ahead, let's just hide our tempo track for a moment over here. Now let's go ahead and let's bring in our chord track. Now one thing to note about the chord track is, is it functions very similar to, for example, the arranger track, in that we can draw in different sections over here, we can do the same thing with the chord track. I can double click and I can change the chords that I wanna enter, I could change them to minor, I could change the intervals, etc. Etc. Now we can also go to the previous chords and the next chords as well. And another thing that we can do is if you have a controller hooked up to your system, I could, for example, navigate over here and I could just simply play in a chord on my controller. So let's activate the instrument input. And I'm just going to play a C major or a D minor and we can enter our chords directly that way. Okay. So now having said that, let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail and see how we can make use of it. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is that we have this follow on off mode. And essentially what this allows us to do is enable or disable our chord track altogether. Now, another thing to point out is that the chord track is entirely non-destructive, meaning that it changes your audio and your instrument parts, but it doesn't do it in a destructive way. And you can revert back at any point in time to your previous version. So let's go ahead, let's just turn this off for a moment and let's talk about some settings. Now in the same way that we set up a time stretch mode for anything to do with tempo following on a track by track basis, we have two new settings in the inspector. If you can't see that, just make sure that you click this eye over here or use the F4 shortcut. We can see that we have these two new modes over here, follow chords and tune mode. Now for the duration of this video, I'm gonna leave follow chords set for the most part to parallel and the tune mode this really has to do with the different type of source material that you're working with on your audio tracks. And for this case, I'm just gonna leave it set to default. And in terms of follow chords, we have different ways in which the chord track can interact with each of our tracks. Let's go ahead and leave this set to parallel for now, but I do recommend experimenting with these different options. So essentially what this means is that in the same way that we can make tempo changes to our tracks and have them follow, if Studio One is set up to do that, we can also do that on a track by track basis. Now this works with audio events and note data that's residing on instrument parts. Now the thing to point out here is that in order for this to work in the same way that we had to have a source file tempo embedded in the audio events so that they know how to follow a tempo track, 
we also need to have any chords embedded into the audio events so that they can properly follow the chord track. Now, how do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. For example, we could simply take this over here, head over to our audio menu, and I could go to detect chords. Now, once that happens, you'll notice that it's gone ahead and it's done a chord detection. Now, it's worth mentioning that we don't actually have to detect the chords on the instrument parts because Studio One has access to the note data that's residing on these instrument parts. Studio One will already have a pretty good idea of what the chords are. But with respect to audio parts, we have to go ahead and detect those chords. Now, once you've detected those chords, you'll notice that we have this information here on the bottom. If you're not seeing this, just need to head over to our options and make sure that this option here, show chords on events is enabled. You notice when that's enabled, we can see all the chords. So let's go ahead here. I'm gonna double click and let's open this in our music editor. And you'll notice that we have the same icon for chords available in the music editor. Now, in addition to that, we also have the ability to select these chords and directly edit them directly from within the music editor as well. So I could, for example, make any changes over here. And also, we could bring up the chord selector directly from the music editor as well. Now, one thing to note about chord detection is that you really want to go through and make sure that the chord detection that's happened has been done properly. Now, ideally, I want all of my chords to fall on a downbeat of each measure over here so that they're sitting properly against the global chord track. Now, another thing to note is that once you've detected chords, you have the ability to head over here and I can extract these chords to the chord track. So in terms of working with a piece of music that comes in, you could do a chord detection, edit them to make sure that they're all sitting on the proper downbeats, etc. That would be doing something like this. And then once you're happy with those results, simply by right clicking any audio event, we can extract to the chord track. Now I've already gone ahead and done this, so I'm not gonna do that. So let's go ahead and remove these chords for a second. Now, another thing to point out is the difference between things like, for example, lead vocals and any harmonies and an instrumental mix down of your track. So for example, it's very easy for Studio One to determine what the chords are in this music reference file. Let's go ahead and play this. We have clear downbeats on all of these bars, which are indicating the chord changes. But with respect to something like a lead vocal, for example, if you're listening to this in isolation and Studio One is analyzing this in isolation, it's pretty difficult to determine what the chords would be. 16 years later in this young lady. So the best workflow when working with audio is to essentially export a mix down of your instrumental and then simply detect the chords based on that mix down. Now, once you've done that, and once you've cleaned up those chords using the music editor, like we know we can do right over here, we can simply send those chords to the chord track by selecting this, extract a chord track, and then once the chord track has the chords that match our song, then if we wanted to embed these chords into any audio event, it's just a matter of clicking audio and applying chords from chord track. So that's using the chord track in Studio One version four. Having the ability to non-destructively adjust any audio or instrument track and have it follow is definitely something that opens up the doorways to having limitless creative potential. I hope you guys got something from this video. Again, my name is Marcus Huskins, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. All right, so Marcus did a really good job of showing sort of the setup of how you'll set your song up to be manipulated by the chord track. So why don't you show us what you can do now that we've basically established the chords of the song and everything's ready to go. Right, so we have our song here and you can see we've got our chords uh, all lined out. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what it sounds like in its current form. 16 years later in this young lady Speaking to a crowd who needed to see She tried and tried But they rolled their eyes One day you'll know the meaning of making a choice She's speaking from her heart but using her voice Tears fill her eyes Alright, so that's a pretty basic arrangement there so what if we came in and we wanted to start playing with how these chords are interacting and let's just go and change the sound of this A 
and make it an A minor, which will really change the sound of that five chord in the key of D. And let's just change this E minor to an E. So that's a two chord in the key of D, and it's really going to give you a whole different flavor of, uh, of what this is going to sound like as an arrangement. So let's take a listen to that. Sixteen years later in this young lady Speaking to a crowd who needed to see She tried and tried But they rolled their eyes One day you'll know the meaning of making a choice She's speaking from her heart but using her voice Tears fill her eyes <laughs> That's just amazing. Holy cow. So yeah. so you're you're telling me not only did we change the MIDI tracks, which you know, other DAWs do that, but all of the audio, including chord instruments like that acoustic guitar, just changed from major to minor. Right. So the That's the, crazy. If I solo the background vocals and this music bed, you can hear if I play it from right here, you will hear that that these G's are now G sharp. <laughs> And if I go back to the E minor, those G sharps are now G's again. So pretty amazing stuff there. Pretty amazing. Good Lord. So this is going to be an amazing tool for songwriters, for arrangers, basically any type of, um, you know, you're in that place in that song that you're wanting to experiment and you want to see what are the possibilities? I mean, the chord track is going to really, really change the way that we arrange music. That's true. And so to take it a step further, we can come here and for, for our users who use Notion, uh, we can take, I, I created this little synth part, and if I solo it, you can hear, it's just a, it's just a simple little, just a simple little stringy type line. But if then if I wanted to have an actual string player play this, you know, string players aren't used to playing things by ear. They want written music. That's no right. big deal. If I've got Notion, if I highlight this and I come over here and go song, send to Notion with the latest version of Notion, I can send that note data to selected tracks and create a lead sheet. And when I click send, it's going to export it to Notion and notice that A minor wow. changed all of my C's to C naturals and it changed the G in the E chord to a G sharp. Oh my gosh, so now we just print this out, hand it to your string player and right. you're done. They've got the chords above the staff where they can practice with a piano or a keyboard or a guitar player and they can practice their string line and then we've got the written notes for them. That's amazing, holy cow. Okay, so that's an awesome feature. So, you know, if you liked what you saw, this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg because we have full-length videos from Marcus and also Richard is going to be creating some more tutorials on how you can use these tools. So uh, check it out. If you're not subscribed already to our YouTube channel, uh, find us on YouTube and uh, definitely sign up for it because we have a lot of really great content coming for Studio One version 4. My name is Donald Johnson. I'm the CEO of uh, MVP Loops co-owner, co-founder. I am a music producer, sound designer. Uh, obviously, we develop software, and uh, I'm also an avid musician. Well, it's an honor to be integrated in the Studio One shop. Uh, MVP Loops, as a company, we strive to make incredible products that will make people's music better. The one thing that I love about Personas and Studio One as a whole is their commitment to actually improving the product year after year. They actually listen to their users and people notice that. And when you have a DAW that kind of lives and breathes and moves with the times, that makes it a lot easier to create great sound and content. In our business, when we're editing and developing tens of thousands of sounds at one time, speed is very important. Uh, also accuracy. And the thing that I really liked about Studio One was that it was sample accurate. When you zoomed all the way in to get to the front to make that perfect cut so that when someone gets the product and they hit a pad or they hit a key, it's accurate. Uh, Studio One delivered that. Another important thing was the drag and drop feature. Uh, before Studio One came along, it was a lot of exporting 
each individual part, each individual track, which made no sense. So Studio One came along and they came along with the drag and drop feature and they were the first in the business to really do it efficiently. And we just gravitated towards it because we knew that it would help us to make our process a, a, a lot easier and a lot smoother. My name is Trevor Lawrence Jr. I'm a drummer and a producer and a songwriter, also a part of the MVB Loops team. I work with Dr. Dre, Herbie Hancock, quite a few other people. Studio One, it's like sonically, it's always been the best to me. And you know, feature-wise, now everything is lined up, especially with the new four. When you hear that stuff, it's like, yo, this is crazy. You know, how come more people aren't on this, right? And it's like, once you discover it, it's like, this is incredible. It's great to be able to get good results fast. So I'm excited for how I'm gonna integrate it now, moving forward. You know, and in one particular situation I work quite a bit, you know, in, in, which is with Dr. Dre and the Aftermath, my team over there that I work with, you know, there's a whole bunch of us throwing ideas and it's like, man, those times when it's not fast enough and you forget it, I got to tell you, man, I, you know, they, they happen. Getting the results in the creative moment because that energy can shift very fast. So if you're in that creative moment, especially with some people that are very intense people, I'm excited for how I'm going to integrate it now moving forward because of all these new features. I'm Nigel Williams, uh, VP of Operations at MVP Loops. I play guitar, studied at Berklee College of Music. In our business, the one that gets the work done is the one that you use, and this one gets the work done. That's, that's just what it is, you know. You know, the new chord track feature is, is the, pretty much the most incredible thing for me. Being a guy that studied music, you know, you hear it, you hear something, it says, it says A minor, but you don't know what the rest of the chords are going along in the track. A lot of people didn't study, a lot of people use their ears, and they know when things aren't right, but now you can see, oh, okay, cool. And now you can chop it out, flip the sample around, you can take the MIDI out, you know, and, and create new things, add it to an instrument, and add your own thing to it, which is what you want to do as a producer. I think the thing that I'm most excited about within Studio One uh, 4 is Impact XT. I've done a whole project with just the first Impact, but now with eight banks and with the incredible reverse feature, which I really love, which is a lot different than the reverses on a lot of other softwares because the, the thing that's unique about the reverse feature in XT is if you hit a sample, you trigger it and it's going and you re-trigger the sample, you turn the reverse off, you can get this waving effect where you can really do some really cool, unique sound design stuff. So it can take a sound that would sound pretty ordinary and make it something extraordinary. Uh, the other option which kind of piggybacks off of XT is the ability to sample into sample one and push that audio right into XT. So that makes our jobs a lot easier. Impact XT, which is incredible because you know I do a lot of drum related stuff. So you know having a, a tool like that with eight banks, you know, and all the um, effects and all the perimeters that can be manipulated, it allows me to have the freedom to do what I need to do creatively, but the sound of it is, is superior. The new impact is, is cool because now you have eight banks, you have 32 choke groups. It also follows the tempo. So if you if you bring a sample in and your tempo is 120, but the set, you know, you want your thing to be 120, your sample's 90, you hit follow tempo and it will it will just play in the, at the tempo of the master track, which is, you know, which is super. You create new things that, that you know people haven't heard. It gives you a lot of inspiration. So that's that's amazing. That's really really amazing. Right now in the Persona Store, you can find our, our brand new expansions called Mainstreams. And what we wanted to do because we have XT now, obviously, is we wanted to take kind of like our best content and put it together. So top 40, top 100 content, whether it be trap or more dance EDM type stuff or more soulful or new R&B type stuff. We put all of this in one package. Our business partner, Nigel Williams, has brought in a lot of incredible musicians to produce live content for us, as well as Trevor Lawrence Jr. has designed 192 custom drum sounds. These are not your regular drum sounds. These are the drum sounds that will make a record a record. So the biggest portion of mainstreams that we really 
looked to do was give you sounds and content that will cut through the mix and make your job a lot easier. What we always start with, my mentor, who uh, really taught me to engineer and produce real records in LA, said garbage in, garbage out. With Studio One the sound algorithm, what you're hearing coming back at you is accurate. So you know what you're hearing, you can trust it. And that's the biggest feature. Then when you compile that with the integration of the hardware, and you compile that with the ability to be able to drag and drop and move very quickly through things that you have to record and get out because times have changed. So now you have to move very fast, but the quality has to be there. So anyone that's thinking about the switch to Studio One, you won't be disappointed. You have incredible sound quality, you have a litany of great features, and on top of all of that, you can bring your current projects from major DAWs into Studio One. So you can just open up, so you don't have to go through the mass migration uh, that other DAWs would require. So Studio One 4 and the brand new expansion from MVP Loops Mainstreams is available right now at the Persona Shop. So if you don't have it, go get it. All right, we're back, and look who I have. I have hey. Dominic Bazil with me. So, uh, you know, MVP Loops, freaking cool guys, right? Awesome guys. <laughs> so they are, like, probably one of the most unique, um, you know, content providers in the fact yeah. that, you know, Love their stuff. not only do they make great content, but you can tell that these are real, yeah, hardcore, yeah. proper musicians Definitely. and producers. Um, so... Huge respect. We really uh, appreciate having their stuff in our shop and them being a part of Studio One. So uh, another great partner for Studio One and for our shop has been uh, the Sample Magic people. Right. And so, so yeah, yeah, Sample Magic has provided some new content for us uh, in the likes of uh, Impact XT. We have a thousand new one shots and loops, also forty nine kits and twenty five music loops. Right on. So. so not just electronic content, we also have uh, now some brand new acoustic drum content. So uh, Tom Breckline yes. uh, is one of the greatest uh, session drummers, live drummers. He played with Chick Corea, played with Eric Johnson, Robin Ford, the list goes Everyone. on. Everybody. So he actually came down to Baton Rouge and we did a sample library with him. And this is also going to be available with Studio One version 4 in the near future. Going back to some of the stuff that the, the guys were talking sure. about with Impact XT, why don't you give us a little spin? Sure, let's do it. All right, so here we are in Studio One 4. I'll drag over my Impact XT there. All right, uh, so empty, but let's go over to our browser and you'll see that we have a list of all of the new content from Sample Magic. Uh, so let's just choose this guy, drag and drop. Sweet, nice blue. Yeah, nice blue, and if you want a different color, just click here. Nice. Go toggle through all the different colors. So let's try green here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we have a kit here, and just to kind of reiterate some of the features, um, you can load all of the eight banks of 16 pads in Impact XT, so you have a total of 128 pads that you can load with samples and loops. Nice. All right, you have different uh, loop options. You can toggle or trigger loops. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, have them loop and just keep loop looping as well as follow the transport and your global mm -hmm. tempo. Um, we give you tons of different choke options. Um, like I said, you can follow the tempo. There's quantization to the beat so that when you trigger a sample or trigger a loop, it'll uh, lock with the uh, transport that's already already running. Nice. Um, then we also have uh, many, uh, we have additional output options for you. So we in, expanded on the stereo outputs as well as the mono outputs. That was a huge request. That was a huge request. Um, Impact XT is really built for you to just create a, an entire production within itself, honestly. You can, you can do that with all the options that we now give you, new filters, new filter options. Um, everything is there for you. You can just create a whole production right in Impact XT. Cool. So let's talk about one of the new features with Studio One version 4. Uh, a lot of people had asked for step sequencing. You right. know, and uh, so we've come up with a new pattern editor. So right, we call it the pattern out. editor. 
which is basically a step sequencer. So let's uh, let's create a new pad in there and double click. And this opens the pattern editor for me. All right, so in its empty state, in its default state, you have 16 steps at a resolution of a 16th note. But we also give you the option of expanding on that. So I'm going to choose 32 steps. All right, and then now we can just simply just start clicking in the grid. Just drawing in. Just drawing in notes. Let's see, I can audition my sounds here. So here's a clap. Let's put that there, maybe there. We'll run the transport. All right, put another clap there. So at this point, I mean, you can really get creative by just drawing in anywhere. You know, um, we give you options for changing the velocity. You can automate these things for every note, for every lane. You can also repeat certain steps. So for instance, in the clap lane, we'll repeat this, all right? Let's see, over here, repeat this. Another cool option with the uh, pattern editor is that you can, let me stop this, is that you can actually uh, change the number of steps per lane. So for mm -hmm. instance, this clap lane, let's change this guy. Instead of 32 steps, let's do 29. All right, so what this is going to do, I have three less steps than everything else in the sequence. So when it loops around, right. it's going to give it a little randomization there. Right, so they're not going to fall on the same Right, they're not going to fall in the same spot every time that it loops around. You can also change the uh, resolution of each step. So now I have a smaller resolution on that particular lane. Many, many options. Another cool feature about the pattern editor is that you can have variations. So you can create a new empty pattern, or you can take a pattern that you have already, duplicate it, and then change maybe a, a couple of the notes. Maybe I want to take these out. All right, and so now I have variations. So I have this guy, and I have this guy. So what do I do with that? In my arranger, I can now duplicate this pattern, which is exactly the same, mm -hmm. all right? And so what I have selected here is variation three. But maybe on this guy, I want variation one. Hmm. So now I can start building my arrangement with different variations of patterns that I've built in the pattern editor. So that's amazing because you can see in just a couple of seconds, you can like, I mean, it's pretty much like oh, yeah. the, 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 the sky's the limit. Yeah, definitely. With the new options in Impact XT and the pattern editor, very powerful creative tools for you. All right, so next we're going to hear from uh, two of my favorite Personas artists, uh, Catfire and Heavy Grinder. Yeah. They're producer, DJ, uh, husband and wife team that uh, are based out of Los Angeles, California. Uh, longtime Studio One supporters and uh, Personas friends. So let's check them out. My name is JJ, also known as Catfire, and also one of the members of Heavy Grinder. I am a producer, DJ, and audio engineer based out of Los Angeles. I'm in Baton Rouge at Presona's headquarters and I'm checking out the new version of Studio One, Studio One 4. I've been a Studio One user since 2012 and the change was immediate because just the workflow alone made me change from what I was using previously and I haven't looked back and there's really not, nothing out there on the market that compares to it. I like to believe that my workflow is fast and it kind of has to be because ID is just popping it out of my head so I have to be very quick. Studio One enables me to do that in a way that no other DAW does. Sonus definitely listens to their user base and that shows in Studio One 4 because pretty much all of the new features or workflow improvements have been requested. They've been implemented in an excellent way. I'm very excited about the new Impact XT, the new Sample One XT, and also the pattern-based sequencer that's included with Studio One 4. Between those, it opens a lot of possibilities to improve my workflow and also to improve the workflow of a lot of users out there. 
The new version of Impact XT includes eight pad banks, which expands the number of available pads from 16 to 128. That opens a lot of possibilities, especially with other two features that I like, which is the time stretching. So whatever tempo your song is at, the samples will follow that. And also the trigger quantization, which means that you can just play one shots and loops at the same time and they'll sync up. So you can play a whole song with just one instance of Impact XT. Sample One XC gives you the ability to record from any given source in Studio One. That includes any inputs, any virtual instruments, or any tracks or buses that you have in your song. Much like Impact XT, Sample One XT also includes time stretching, so whichever tempo you decide to say your song to, your samples will follow. So nothing will break if you decide to change from 110 to 120 BPM in the middle of a production. For anyone out there who might be interested in checking out Studio One, and maybe it's your first time, it's super easy to use. You'll be up and running really quickly. I know I did. It was like two hours. If you're curious, you can always download my demo song available with Studio One 4. You can dig around and break it down, see how I do what I do, and hopefully learn something from it. All right, guys, we're back. So uh, Catfire also, you know, aside from being just a freaking cool guy, awesome. is also featured on one of our new demo songs in Studio One yep. version four. So make sure you check out that demo song and check out what he's doing yeah, production-wise. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, in addition to that, we're going to be posting another much longer video and much more detailed video of him explaining some of the new features with Impact XT, Sample One XT, and you know all kinds of new features. So speaking of yep. Sample One XT, uh, why don't you show us a little bit about some of the new features? Sure, sure. All right, so let's take a look at Sample One XT. So here's the new Sample One XT, uh, blue, but of course, like Impact XT, you can change the color. Nice. Uh, so Sample One XT gives you, we expanded upon it, we give you a lot of new options in terms of being able to record in sampling it'll actually make slices as you record in using the gate record option there um, we give you envelopes so graphical envelopes that you can uh, draw in different things according to the, the the pitch filter and the amp and the lfo options we give you also mapping capabilities there um, so one of the cool features about sample one xt is that you can actually there's an auto slice feature in it when you drag in certain loops um, well, any loop, really. Uh, so, for instance, here's a loop here. Now, if I were to drag this over, it's just going to add it. But once I hold the modifier shift, now it's going to add the sample, but it's also going to chop it up and slice it. Oh, sweet. Uh, and then that's also going to map to different keys in Sample 1 XT. So now, uh, in my mapping view, you see all the different slices here. They're assigned automatically to MIDI notes that's awesome. that you can play on your MIDI keyboard. So that's just drag and drop, and you hold down shift. Correct. Awesome. Correct. And so um, with that, you can you know replay samples, that sort of thing. You can remap things. Um, you can uh, manipulate things differently in the loop that you have. A lot of ton of creative options and this you can do this with any audio file it's not just audio loops or music loops it can be any audio file that you have on your computer you can do this with um, another option in sample one xt and let's just reveal this guy here is uh we gave you effects so just like presence xt has uh different effects uh delays and reverbs and modulations that sort of thing we gave you that in sample one xt as well so here is, and we're going to enable um, the new loop option here. Put it on sustain. All right, so you have your loop point there, and I'm just going to play it. All right, and so just to go through some of the, uh, here's some modulation effects. So there's a phaser, flanger, chorus. You have delays. There's even a gator, just like an Impact XT. So a lot of new creative options there. Um, just like Impact XT, you also have the option to reverse 
So now you can reverse, you have some reverse options where you can have it ping pong, so it'll go back and forth, just play the sample over and over, back and forth. So mm, that's awesome. So lots of new creative options available for you in Sample One XT, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We gave you tons of new uh, filter options there as well. Um, you can automate those. You can, you know, use the LFO to manipulate those. Lots of, you know, uh, creative tools for sound design there. Killer, awesome. All right, guys. So next, we're going to hear from uh, another longtime friend of Personas. It's Johnny Guybe. So he's with Home Studio Trainer. I'm sure a lot of you guys that are, you know, follow our online community have heard of Johnny and uh, probably have been helped out by him because he's he's one of the most helpful and knowledgeable guys. Uh, Definitely. That that's part of our community. Uh, and then after that, we're going to hear from Blake Smith. So check this out. My name is uh, Johnny Geib, and I run and operate uh, HomestudioTrainer.com. The biggest thing about Studio One, especially the new version 4, is it completely takes the technology out of your way. It lets you be a musician. It lets you be a songwriter. It lets you be a producer, uh, producing and helping other people mix their music. As a drummer and a drum sound kind of producer, I'm really looking forward to the Impact XT improvements. A lot more ability for drummers to actually hook up a V-drum kit and be able to trigger things naturally with hi-hat, open and close hi-hat, cancellation, a uh, whole bunch of new features in Impact XT, not to mention being able to just use more than 16 pads. Uh, you can edit more, uh, you can send tracks from a track directly into impact to an impact pad, which is cool. So if you're uh, sampling a snare drum, you can sample it at different levels, cut it into pieces, highlight the pieces and say send it to a new impact. Uh, and it'll open up and it'll assign all of the sounds to the pads for you. So it like takes seconds to sample a whole drum kit and actually have it uh, populate the pads. There's also sample one XT which is really big for a lot of the users that uh, use the MPC because you can really edit up a sample and, and like Impact, you can right click on any track that you have, any event, and you can send it to a new sample one uh, for further editing. You've got keyboard splits in there now, you've got all sorts of uh, effect editing that you can actually put into sample one. I mean, it's. I think that the MPC people are going to look at uh, Impact XT and Sample 1 XT and they're really going to say, wow, I don't need my MPC anymore. I think some of the biggest improvements, I think that a lot of people that are using uh, other DAWs for, uh, that use a lot of VST plugins and instruments, I think they're going to like a lot of the new MIDI options, especially the drum editor that is now finally in Studio One to where you have the ability to edit your MIDI drums, to be able to drag in those MIDI loops and then open up the drum editor and edit them like drum hits instead of like piano hits. So you can really see every edit. You can group highlight. You can edit everything from your velocity uh, to your note length and whether you want the note to cut off or not. So it's, for, for drum editors, it's huge. Being a drummer myself and doing MIDI production on on drums and drum tracks for clients and stuff. That's that's one of the best MIDI features that I've seen so far. I think that some of the new features like the chord track and all of the features associated with that is huge for songwriters because now you have the ability to bring in a song, figure out what key they're in, or if you can isolate a guitar track, you can literally have uh, the chord track detect what's being played in the track. So now you can just bring in a song, detect all the cording and stuff and be able to build your own track from scratch. Being able to import AAF files moves Studio One, I think, into the next level because it gives you all of the quality and post-production options. It, it sets up everything from wherever you're coming from, which is nice. There's no thinking involved. And for people that are doing multiple projects and stuff, it's going to be a huge decision maker for those that are trying to go from one DAW into Studio One, because now you can work with clients with other DAWs seamlessly and not have to worry about setup time. 
being able to export those files and send it to those people. Some people have the stigma of using a particular DAW. That stigma is gone now because now you can send them what they need and they don't even have to work at bringing it into their project. Go to Facebook, join the HST Studio One support group. Uh, you can also, there is also an HST songwriting group for Studio One users. And then there's the main website, www.homestudiotrainer.com. That's the mother site. Everything on that site is free, so feel free to sign up and become a member. There is over 400 Studio One videos, even all the way back to Studio One version 2. Uh, if you're still using version 2 and you're still looking for instruction, you can find them there. Hi, I'm Blake. I'm a music composer, I'm a professional trainer, a sound designer, and a YouTuber. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, since 2016, uh, I regroup all these activities uh, under Driven Sounds, the company I founded. Uh, to work on all these activities at the same time. Driven Sounds works with the top of the line music company to provide them music production, sound content, beta testing, workshop masterclass, and even professional mixing. Here at Driven Sounds, we provide the best sounds you can get for your needs and pay attention to every details for you to be satisfied. And we do that in Studio One. <laughs> what I love the most about Studio One is how easy it is to work with. You want an audio track from a MIDI track, boom, drag and drop, you have it. You want a bus channel, right click, bam, it's here. You can combine VSTs, you have Melodyne directly integrated in it. The effects and sounds are really amazing and mostly the pro eq i love really love the pro eq it's really professional eq like like the name you know and yeah no headache it's all there easy with studio one four presonus takes it to the next level uh, i know you heard that a lot but in this case, it's really true. One of the features I love the most is the call track. Basically, the call track lets you manipulate and modify any chords from any source you want, MIDI and audio. Well, nothing is better than a demo, right? So let's see how we can do that. So here we have one, one bar loop chord. So the thing is to open the call track, uh, you have to click on this icon right here. Okay, so we have the chord follow on. Then we have to click on the the, the event in here, and you have to put the follow the follow call on either of these three things. I would just put that in parallel right now. Okay, and you have to double click right here. So when you double click here, it will activate. Uh, the, the chord selector, if you double click again, we have the chord selector. So that chord selector is like um, the uh, guard of the key right here, the guard of the chords, okay? So we in C, that's convenient right here. So we in C, so we put the C right here. So that's the, the key of the song, okay? If I double click and if I, um, if I change, if I click here, 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 um, let's see what happens. So yeah, it transposes, it modifies, it manipulates the chords with uh, and keep my style when I play. So that's that's actually the really great thing o o about the chord selector. Now I have an audio file. We will do the same thing. So we will activate. We click on that. 
uh, here we will activate the chord or get put in. I will put universal for the audio because this is a, a, a audio audio thing. And I will right click right now and go to audio and just click detect chords. It has detected the chord right here. I see that it says it's in F sharp six. So first thing I have to do is go to F. F sharp. What we can do now is like do the same thing right here. So you can duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that. And now with the audio, what you can do. So if I put sharp right here, I can. Okay. And um, I can change right here. I put A6. I can put D6 and I could put DB6 right here. So let's check and uh, let's check that and see what happened. Here, there you have it. You can make chords progression from an audio track and from a MIDI track, uh, just like that. Now I can work my sound design, my sample packs, my presets really fast and easy now with uh, Studio One. And really thanks Studio One, really thank you for that. Really thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>
There's so much information and, and opinions and facts and conflict that are flying all, all around the world. And, and so um, it, can be, it can be a huge challenge trying to extract truth from all these things, or at the very least, what, what the truth is about what you think about something or, or, or uh, how passionate or what your belief may be you know, on a certain topic, whatever that may be. When you can hear it, hopefully you will, you will hear there is a, it's almost a, a vibe of uh, desperate frustration behind it. It's a more aggressive sounding song. It definitely has more of a, a rock type edge to it with loud guitars and, and solos and, and things like that. So it's, it's about, the spirit is all about one's determination to finally figure out what's the truth in all this or what's, what's real in all this. And that's kind of where, where it comes from. This tune was, um, was was born from its uh, inception in, in Studio One, and so I utilized loops that were uh, a part of the Studio One library, and putting the song together that will actually be part of the, the final mix. So it'll be a it'll be a fantastic um, fantastic demonstration of how all these tools and creative inspiration all come together in this one software recording program. So we're looking forward to it. My name is Scott Bernard. I'm from Nashville, uh, originally from Louisiana. When I moved to Nashville, um, everybody has a studio in their house there, you know. And Pro Tools is the whole, uh, kind of, at the time it was like total industry standard. You know, everybody had a Pro Tools rig. And, um, a few years ago, I just started you know, getting the itch to, to, to move, you know, from Pro Tools. And uh, since I've started using Studio One, I, uh, I'm just I'm really floored by how intuitive it is for someone who's like me. I'm I'm a, I'm a guitarist. I'm not an engineer. At home, I do tracks, uh, remote sessions for people. Right? I've said this before. Where I, other, in my experiences, other DAWs kind of present you with a new version, and it's like this is what that company tells you you need or it's cool and it feels like with personas it's, it's like they hear you and they actually come out with stuff that ah, that's what yeah I want that I've, that's exactly what I've been thinking about kind of thing you know and so that's what I I dig that certain certain little things um, intuitive things that personas does just makes creativity just quick I was kind of you know when I jumped ship you know I was like man I don't know I'm a little nervous to do it and um, so I decided to open up Studio One. I'm gonna write a song and create a track for it. See if I can, just to see if I can do it, not for it. And I mean, with, within, you know, that day I had a song, a new song written, and I had tracked it all. And it was just so quick. I was, a, I was thinking it would be a, a lot of, a long process of, wait a minute, how do I do this again? I mean, the drag and drop stuff is so intuitive for me. Yeah, I love it. I, I'm really, really digging it. I don't want to miss
Here we come. 